So, yeah, at 140, he said it was high. It's, it's three mm -hmm. times that now, but he says yeah. you're still good if you, if you got at least a five-year horizon. That's kind of interesting right. coming from Elon, right? Well, it is. He said a lot of things that he hadn't said. Of course, he's always sort of saying unusual things about the stock. But in this case, I think we were talking before that about sort of the long term. And I think what what we were talking about is the idea that COVID had accelerated kind of trends and, and selections of companies that are going to be important in 10 years today. And I think that's really what he was talking about is that they are he feels they're out of danger. He talked about them being, remember, he thought they were in mortal danger for a long time, that they've re they've started to reach the kind of scale that's necessary to sustain things. And I think that's what he was discussing, is that if you're in this for a long term, we are the company to beat. And that's that's probably pretty accurate at this point, despite the fact that other car companies are, are, are in the game. They're far and ahead, uh, way ahead of people now. They're trying to get even more ahead on batteries. Two years ago, Elon was having the worst year of his life. Yeah. And he was kind of alternating between crying and laughing on the, uh, with the New York Times. Uh, now, two years later, the world is going through a rough patch, but Tesla and Elon Musk seem to be doing A-OK. -okay. What's your sense yeah. of him now? He's still very outspoken, but he seems to have kind of toned down some of the yeah. more volatile things that he was doing on Twitter anyway. What should we read into that? Well, not everything. He, we, he and I got in a few little scrapes. But yeah, I think it was interesting for him to, when he complimented oil and gas, I was like, who am I speaking to? Can I, can I get another one of your family members on the phone? Because he has been sort of attacked big oil. And as you know, talked about how they were sort of out to get him and the shorts were in cahoots with oil and gas. And in this case, he was taking a longer view that a lot of these people didn't know that their industry would be so damaging to the planet. So he was sort of reaching, he was being empathetic in a way, although I'm not sure you need to be empathetic to the oil and gas industry, given the damage that industry has done and well known for a long time. Um, so, you know, and, and we all like our gas cars and we've used them and everything else. But I, I think he, he sort of is like the game is over. And he, he, he thought that fossil fuels, the era was at an end. So why not say, well, they didn't know they were going to do this much damage. But that said, he talked a lot about the climate damage that has been done because of uh, emissions and things like that. And Kara, it's Deirdre. I know over the years, mm -hmm. you've talked to the most important leaders in tech. And I just wonder, um, where Elon sort of stacks up in your latest conversation. I mean, the yeah. stock is up 400 percent year to date, nearly 800 percent over the last 12 months. Can he fulfill those yeah. expectations? Well, I think, you know, I think he's trying with this battery issue. And I think he was he was irritated at the beginning of the conversation. And I was I, I, I didn't cover the thing, but he was mad. I guess I represented the press, but th that people he didn't need a prototype to show off that they don't understand me, essentially. And, you know, the issue is he's been more right than wrong in a lot of these things. And people have sort of bet against him. He had a lot of shorts against him. And so he's sort of in this I'm going for batteries now. And what, what was interesting about him is I don't really know if he's a tech person anymore or ever was after he started after he stopped with pay uh, x.com and paypal um, because he's working in energy he's working in transportation solar and now of course Neuralink, which we talked about quite a bit this new company uh this the newest company not a new company um about putting chips in your brains he's sort of this sort of renaissance man of a lot of things some of which will work out and some of which won't uh, won't but all of them are really interesting concepts including tunnel boring it's really interesting and so that he doesn't really compare to you know jeff bezos in, at the end of the day is selling toilet paper right so like i don't well, know what to say faster Fa i know that I mean, but you, you know got what i mean AWS, like, he's got yeah, his own but, space so he's thing storing going on. information about toilet paper i don't mean to be rude <laughs> but it's not like he, he, the blue origin stuff is interesting he wants yeah. to go with a space module and, and elon wants to go on to planets that that's their difference in opinion apparently um but you know and 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 even steve jobs he's selling a phone right or i'm not to mean to impugn them but these are these are big ideas about climate change about how we live on this planet the air we breathe and everything like that and so it's kind of hard to com i don't know who he, he, he'd be compared to thomas edison i guess because thomas edison was sort of involved in a lot of different things you know we don't know our history as well but thomas edison was involved in all kinds of stuff um, including, I think, electric cars. I'm not sure if he, I think he was. I think he was involved with electric cars. But the the the, con, the conceptual ideas around them, whether they work or not, are fascinating. And the Tesla stuff seems to be working out better. And as you know, two years ago, he really was exhausted. That's the last time we did an interview, right, coming out of that period. Mm -hmm. 
a, a taped interview. I've seen him since then. But yeah. um, and so he really has sort of just continued to keep going with it.